Seattle chef Shota Nakajima shot to foodie fame after starring in last season's Top Chef. He was the runner-up and winner of the Fan Favorite Award. And now he is running his new restaurant on Capitol Hill called Taku. And now he's venturing into something new, his own line of teriyaki sauce. It's been almost a year since we first actually met and chatted. A big year for you. You had just wrapped up filming Top Chef in Portland. What is new? What have you been up to? I launched the teriyaki sauce line, got into retail business, working on some new projects that's TBD. I technically signed some NDAs, so I can't say it, but it's some fun, cool things. But you also reopened Taku too, right? You know, I had to wait a whole year, pretty much when I was done, because I opened originally in March 2020. It was like the biggest tease. It's like, you don't get to see this space with people in it yet. <laughs> so now, you know, every I, I think that kind of, exaggerates the gratefulness of having people in there and you know it's i'll be working like normal and i'll look up and i'll see a full restaurant with the line at the door sometimes oh. on weekends and i'll just be like you know this is pretty cool that's awesome by the way what is the name of your teriyaki sauce line and let's let's put it to work my teriyaki sauce line is um with the brand make umami all of my sauces you're gonna see dog or pets of some sort why is because I'm a little weird, but being animal weird is socially accepted. So I'm like, it's okay, right? I love it. <laughs> so you were going to use the teriyaki sauce to do what with that eggplant? Eggplants in season, one of my favorite ingredients. It's a simple dish. I'm going to cut the top off first. And one thing about these eggplants is the skin is pretty tough. So if you have a peeler, use a peeler. I'm using my knife not to show off. It's because I'm at my mom's house and I don't know where the peeler's at. Um, <laughs> I'm never going to attempt that. I will definitely get a peeler. What is the point of taking the skin off? You know, if you cut it into rings or whatnot, you'll get that skin left over. And yeah. this is gonna be cut in big chunks and sauteed in the teriyaki sauce. So if there's no openings like this, it doesn't soak in the flavors. Sometimes the seeds are really big. And yeah. if they're really big inside, I take a spoon and I just take it out. Yeah, this is called langiri, kind of a traditional way of cutting it. And I'm going to kind of go back to what you said, because my chef always said something that the only reason why people say they don't like specific ingredients is because it wasn't prepared properly the first time they tried it. Boom. Take that, Grandma. I'm just kidding, Grandma. <laughs> and this is already warmed up. One important thing about um, when you cook with pans, especially if it's a not, not a nonstick one, you want to make sure your pan is hot and you're hitting cold oil in. Uh, why cold you do oil. that is cold oil. So when you saute things, it doesn't stick and it reacts because the pan's so hot and the oil's cold and it goes in. So it almost creates this two layer thing. So you can drop eggs in here. And even if it's a steel pan, that's how you make sure it doesn't stick. Okay. You just blew my mind with that tip that I could have used like 20 years ago. Thank you. I got you. I got you. I've been doing this for a minute. I mean, before I forget, I put a good amount of oil in and I try to hit the skin side down um, with hot oil and it's on as hot as it can be. Why is because um, eggplant skin reacts well with hot oil. And what it does is it preserves the color as well. I'm going to add some chopped and minced ginger in. If you're putting that in there and you're about to put the teriyaki in, will you tell us a little bit about how you developed a teriyaki sauce? I condense a lot of the fun knowledge that I picked up throughout the year of like, okay, nuttiness, how do you add nuttiness, fattiness? So how we operate this is we get a bunch of sesame seeds, we grind it up on a high motor, and with that residual heat, it almost toasts it up. And then we turn half of it almost into a puree, half of it kind of chunky, and then mm -hmm. we use that for teriyaki sauce. So there's like weird cooking things that I like to do compared to a lot of Teriyaki sauce, if you look at the ingredients, there's just, you know, there's more ginger, garlic. I added a lot of uh, nutritional yeast because I personally think that tastes like mushrooms and I'm a big fan of just mushroom umami. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you for sharing. Not many people would give yeah. away that much info. That looks- So this is getting cooked- Delicious already. Yeah, this is getting cooked pretty well. So I'm gonna add some sesame oil because I like that different ar aroma that it gives. I'm gonna add some chili flakes. But blooms, I'm going to add some green onions, and we're going to go ahead and shake up the teriyaki sauce. You want to do this part kind of quick so that chili doesn't burn right there. You're going to go ahead and add that teriyaki sauce. Ooh, that sizzle. We're going to kind of saute and let it reduce down. 
And again, if you added that green onion in the beginning, it'll lose kind of its crunchy texture almost. And I, mm -hmm. I like having a little bit of that. I like to take it off around now because at this point, everything has been cooked. It's a very simple dish. It's literally one ingredient, but because that sauce has so much flavor in it. And it smells so good. And I'm trying to open the can. Oh, it just smells so powerful. And a portion of the sales for the proceeds that will come from this will be donated to World Central Kitchen. And you can check it out on New Day's website if you want to find out more.